be back on the estate tomorrow night when Karen finds out if Sharon's half-sister is also Barry's long-lost brother and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue. It's not the millionaire. At 11.30... Fast no! It was all four of them! And her! Like a fucking intervention! We're worried about you, Eamon! I mean, honestly, you have a couple of little episodes on live TV and... What's that? Really? Five of them? Jesus, that is a lot. Yeah, anyway, where does she get off judging me? You know, she goes out, gets drunk every night, brings a different fella home. She doesn't even ask their names, and I'm unstable. Do you know what they sing about her around town? Eve is worth a punt with her flappy little... Yep, standing by. Good evening, I'm Eamon Tightly. Tonight, behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man. Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job, but as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds. Places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, Let's start four, three, four, three... Cracking so. Good evening, friends. And yes, it's true, I can hardly really believe it myself. But we are back for this special one off reunion episode of Just the Job. And to be clear, it's the show that you remember with me, good old sidekick, little Jimmy Chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY, and of course, some special surprise guests from Just the Job's illustrious past. And I know what you're all thinking oh, there's an election coming up. But there'll be no politics tonight. Not on there'll this show. No and that is a Peter Clement that. promise. So let's get tonight's show kicked off with a slightly askance look at the mighty bevel. Because you Hold will be... Hold it right there, please. Oh, come on. Oh, God, it's you. Yeah, it uh, certainly is me. <laughs> you naughty, naughty little fuckers. Sorry. Peter. Hey, Frank, did you know about this? <laughs> Ah, oh, look at that face. Got you fucking dead. You cheeky fucker. Peter, you thought you were here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job. I, I can't believe this. I can't. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. <laughs> I don't have long, Eric, so listen up. You are a character in a video game. That is why your dreams and deja vu are off the chart. No time, mate. Thing is, whatever you do doesn't matter. You're supposed to keep repeating this one show forever, never knowing that you're caught in a loop. But something's gone wrong, see? Your subconscious is remembering at night. Oh, I think it's because I know that this is just a video game. I think that's messing with reality. 
Harry? Have you been drinking, Dave? No, I haven't been fucking... Oops, there's Eamon. Sorry, gotta go. Get help, Dave. For fuck's sake. You get help. Cheek of it. Try and do a bloke a favour. Eamon. Eamon. How long have you been planning, Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement, you were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothery, to Fanny and Martin Clement. Oh, Peter, what have we let ourselves in for? That's right, they get up at the crack of dawn to take the trip down to the capital by coach. It's your infamous old man and her long suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Julia Salisbury. You Peter's mother? No. Let's see. All right, come on then. They brought me on early. Look on the bright side, you get to the pub quicker that way. I wish. I've got to get back to Campaign HQ where the phone's been ringing off the hook tonight. <laughs> and, um, and if I may, Eamon, uh, viewers can call advance with any questions after the show on capital 341562. Yeah, great, whatever. Sit down. Uh, so, sit down. Uh, what was life like for young Peter growing up in the Clement House? What was life like for young Peter growing up in the Clement House? Well, uh, well, obviously I wasn't there, but but, um, I but I'd imagine that there, there were a lot of similarities between the, uh, the child, Peter Clement, and the man sat before you tonight, Eamon. Uh, uh, just like the adult Peter, I'd imagine that the, the five-year-old version was, uh, was headstrong, charming, and a lot more coherent before 8pm. Not entirely sure what this path is supposed to be about. Actually, that's, that's rather good. Who are you? I'm Julia Salisbury. Uh, Peter and I are running for Prime Minister. Oh, that explains it. Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen your face on a bus stop. Plausible. <laughs> Julia Blueberry, everybody! Very <laughs> tough for the election. I don't worry about it. You wouldn't recognise any of the other candidates either. He only reads articles about himself. <laughs> In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? Who's running this show? This, oh, Christ. It's... Dorothy Hanneman. You called me at the wrong time. You could use the excuse for a cruise ship entertainer. <laughs> oh, please stop looking, Eamon. My arse is quite clean enough. Dotty. Here's one finger for the north and two fingers to the south, and we can all apologize tomorrow. Let's tally another drink. Very difficult day. I wish I'd never bought that mobile phone. Ah, they'll never catch on. Who wants the phone going off when you're having a quiet pint? Yes, that's what they said about television too. Uh, so, Dorothy, uh, let me ask you, uh, what do you think we could see in Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring prime minister? Household name and now aspiring prime minister. Yes, Mrs. Hammond. Well, that question is clearly not meant for me. Is that it? question is clearly not meant for me. Well, think about it, Eamon. Well, when Peter was a child in Rothering. When Peter was what a was child I? In Rothering, what was I? Also a child? I wasn't even a fucking fetus, you idiot! Uh, yes, of course, yes. So yes. why did you ask me that yes, question? Uh, well, I have to stick to the script. 
pardon? I have to stick to the script. I have to stick to the script. My therapist. Your what? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Just grow a bloody spine, man! You're lucky you don't work at three. I would send you to a fucking boot camp! I would send you to a fucking boot camp! Dorothy Hammerman, everyone! I would send you to a jacket! I don't suppose you feel like taking me with you, do you? <laughs> Darling, you interviewed the Archbishop of Pendleshire after 12 pints and more than a few whiskey chasers. You know my will, sweetie. Just keep taking the medicine. Until either it starts to help. Or you no longer need it. <laughs> hey, Eric. Don't think I didn't see you there. Oh, shit. I didn't see you there. Well... Before we bring our next guest on, let's look at a classic clip from Just The Job. It's on that monitor there. Peter, if you'd like to watch. So, we're trying this new segment called... And that's about two minutes. Right, I'm going to have a look at that monitor. I've no idea what clip you're going to play. Uh, it was an idea that Peter and Jimmy came up with at the pub one night, I think. Anyway, it was not going very well. The first week got a bit feisty and the contestant beat up the makeup girl. And the Lovely, Danny Hatch. A pop star on. She kept making jokes about her. Interesting choice. Yeah. I'll drink to uh, that. Uh. Tabloids found out. The next week's yeah, bombs up. Out. Yeah, why not? It, Got to keep the old grey matter lubricated after all. Ideas. Can we reset, please? Well, it's time for a segment that the papers have called explosive and the prudes have called inadvisable, reckless and puerile. It's... I'll drink to that. Now, I want to say up front that our floor manager, Frank, advised us against doing this, didn't you, Frank? Yes. I definitely did advise against doing this. It's a bad idea. Get, Get off, off the, the screen, screen Frank! Frank! Get on with it, then. Tonight's guest fancies himself as a bit of a handyman. It's everyone's favourite TV personality, it says here on the card, Peter Glamour! Good evening, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I've never met you before, have I, PC? You don't mind if I call you PC, do you? You can call me whatever you like, pal. Not according to my contract. Well, if you've read a paper at any point this week, you know how this bit goes. So, shall we make a start? Total stranger who I've never met before? Yeah, don't labour the point, LJ. Cats are better than dogs. I'll drink to that. Funny, always had you down as a dog person. What can I say, Mrs C likes a stroke of an evening? <laughs> I'm sure she does. Coffee is better than tea. Especially first thing in the morning. Hey! You're supposed to say, I'll drink to that. Oh, shite, sorry. I'll drink to that. Hey! Yeah, I'll see what you did there. I always said you had excellent eyesight. Uh, I'll drink to that. Oi, hey! that wasn't in rehearsals. <sighs> Skinny is better than Binny Bob Jean Schultz. Never heard of either of them. So I guess I'll drink to that. Skinny was in here last week doing this. Oh, is that who she was? Yeah. I thought she was in porn the way she kept banging on about her Girls parents. are better than boys. And Mrs. C is the best of the lot, and I will definitely drink to that. <laughs> oh, now, this one's going to be hard for you, because we both know how much you want that shot. I do. I do want that shot. Little Jimmy Chisel, popular and handsome daytime TV entertainer and master craftsman. It doesn't say that. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Look, it says Little Jimmy Chisel and all that good stuff about me is better than fading amateur woodworker Peter Clement. Fading right, I'm not going to argue with you, Eric, but we are definitely fucked here. It's just a question of how badly fucked are we? I mean, are we talking tickling us with the tip or crushing prostates? You should have been a poet. By the time Hammerman's finished with us, we won't be able to hold a pen. I don't think she was actually angry with us. Apparently she got a phone call in the first slot. And we're just collateral damage. Uh, I can't walk with a poet, Eric. Of course. Ten seconds, everybody. Don't know any rhymes. All devolved into a fight. Okay, yeah. going in five, four, three. I never did do that segment again. Fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most Fantastic beloved TV shows. shows. Now, Just the Job had two shows. successful now, runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and from again from 1972 to 1976. 1976. And Peter, across many, many of those shows, Peter, many, many there was always shows, one man by your side. To Neil. And Neil. that's not him. And that's not him. Can I not just do my own line? No, nah, it's too late. What's your name, darling? No, it's Chelsea Bonds. <laughs> Chelsea Bonds. <laughs> oh, that's your actual name. Okay. Uh, uh, Chelsea mm. Bonds, everybody! <laughs> oh, no, I forgot the jiggy bit. Oh, I'm coming. Wait up, wait for me. I'm coming. 
Moment. Oh. Oh. Chelsea, how are you, Pat? Pete, love. Oh, you've not aged a job. Try telling that to me, bloody. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, take a seat there oh. now. <laughs> well, uh, Chelsea, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight into this bit of Peter's life. Well, to be honest, love, I'm not. But as I'm here and I'm on telly, I'll give it a go. Fire away. <laughs> right. Uh, what are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Oh, well, I'd like to think that the off-screen version is a lot more sober. Well, you'd be surprised, love. Everybody likes a drink in this game, or worse. But I've never got mixed up in drugs. And as my old man used to say, what looks like chocolate often turns out to be sculpted <laughs> shite. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, we've got a little bit of archive footage here which shows us exactly what you're talking about there. Um, let's have a look at that. Oh. OK, LJ, let's take a look at one of our viewers' letters. Right, you are, boss. This first one's from... This can't be right. Give me that. This letter is from... Oh. See? This letter is from Dick Cockley. Dick Cockley? Who comes from... Oh, fuck off. Let me. Dick Cockley. From Little Muff on the Green. He says, it's not a real place, is it? Fuck those. I know we shouldn't have had those chases, though. He says, don't look at me, you'll set me off. He says that? No, shut up. He says, dear Peter, I'm having terrible trouble with my knob. It's so small, I can't even use it. I, I think he's talking about a doorknob, ladies and gents. I wouldn't be so sure. Listen to this. Oh, God. I've tried to get a bigger one. But all the shops have run out of big knobs. All they've got left is tiny little knobs, even smaller than mine. Poor bastard. Yeah, I'm too pissed for this. Bloody lightweight. <clears throat> the other day, I needed to get into the bathroom in a hurry, but I couldn't get a grip on the tiny knob. I've got... I got so angry that I kicked the knob with all my might and it went straight through the wood. So now my knob is stuck inside the door. You don't need our help, mate. You need a doctor. I don't have a big enough tool to get it out. Can just the job, please send one of your fellas over with one of their big tools to try and fish out my little knob. For Christ's sake, did you write this, Frank? It's real. It's real. Christ. I'm so sorry, Dick. Dick Cockley. Just get to the end. OK, I'm nearly there. <clears throat> Otherwise, Peter, I'm afraid my knob might be lost forever. <laughs> So great to see you've lost none of the old spark there. God, I remember that. We were three sheets to the wind. You should get Jimmy out here to talk about this. Actually, that was the plan. <laughs> I used to watch Just the Job back in the day. Oh, yes. You see, I used to work in the city, and my boss, he bought me a colour telly. You don't need to know the details. But it meant I could watch Just the Job whenever I could. I were that excited. I used to tell the old world and his mother, see him, see him. I know him. <laughs> oh, know Petey, him. love, I was so <laughs> proud to have known you. Oh, and also so sad to have lost your love. I mean, I know it were only a few months, and let's face it, we were so bloody young, but, you know, you were... No, you still are the nicest kindest, most attentive bloke I've ever been with. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else for now. You were the only man who used to make me... Steady <laughs> now! <laughs> and without you, I would never have discovered the reliable pleasures of the black and tan! First girl I ever knew to drink a pint. Oh, whatever happened to us. whatever happened to us. You did, Petey Love. You, you and the black and tans. You and the black and tans. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember. Sorry, Charles. Ah, you're all right, Sorry, Petey. I, I forgave you years ago. You were I weak and easily led. And let's be honest, once you had a fucking drink inside you, you were a sucker for a pretty I face. You were a sucker for a pretty face. It was like you had this insatiable need to be loved like you had something to prove to the entire fucking world more likely yourself chelsea bonds everybody thank you for agreeing to do this
In 1941, long before in Just a Job ever aired, you, job like so many men of your generation, you were conscripted so into the army to go and fight in the continent, and it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Of course, I was only a kid during the war, so my main memory is of being with a nice family in Chintlebury. It's not your best friend the last 40 years, but actually, could be worse. It's little Jimmy Chisholm! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> right, uh, yeah, let's go. <sighs> Mr. Cockley, I presume. You can call me Dick. Sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, take a seat there. Oh. So, tell us, there. what's it like? to be friends with Peter Clement. Like? Oh, you know, Eamon, I was sitting back there watching all the footage on the monitors and I was thinking, well, despite all the injuries from his constant drunken pranks, yeah, it was still one of the best bits of my life. Yeah, we never really were friends, though, were we, LJ? Oh, I'll go by Jim now, mate. Right, you are. You see, Jim here can hold his drink. There's nothing lightweight about him. We put whiskey in his coffee, vodka in his squash. Just seemed to give the show a bit more of an edge of unpredictability. Oh, and kept the Red Cross on their toes, too, from time to time. God, that were awful to you, man. A lesser man would have walked out. And maybe a less desperate one. Yeah. Well, I know it might seem backward, but we used to drink to ease the repetitive boredom of the same old success. And you know, Eamon, as me old man used to say, you can even get tired of Quim. If it's the only dish on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> Little Jimmy Chessel, everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that, mate. No, that weren't your fault. No, I kept my distance, if I'm being honest. So angry with you for all these years now, Pete. I'm glad I did this. I think I needed to. See you for a pint after. Indubitably, Mr. Cockley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't only just the job, Peter, that brought you into the nation's homes. Starting in 1977 and running every week night for nearly seven years, you brought that inimitable. Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late night chat show, Petey. Let's have a look at a classic clip now. Let's have a look at a classic clip. And a couple of minutes back. Same as before. Sure is. You okay, Eamon? Am I drunk, Eric? Don't think so. Must be the show then. The show must be drunk, Eric. Maybe I'll get it a coffee. I think we're past that point. But since received a calling to ministry, and became a rising star in church circles instead. Peter's always been a fan of his. Yeah, there's a drink. Did always regret it not meeting him. It was supposed to just be Penny for him. If you were a pop star, Eric, a genuine cocaine groupies on the tour bus level pop star, would you give it all up to be a priest? Ladies and gentlemen, please. Oh, I don't know. In the of the church, it's probably as crazy as giving up a five-night-a-week chat show to become a politician. Ha! <laughs> I'll drink to that. Uh, Archbishop, a few years ago, when you were a pop star... Nah, my oh, no thanks, I still need my job. Can we reset, please? Really, you're too tough. Anyway, back then, you agreed to go on just the job to do a little thing called I'll drink to that. Do you remember that? Yes, I saw the first two, and I remember feeling very strongly this was something that might come back to haunt me. Well, you're not wrong about that. Play the jiggle. Okay. <laughs> 
very simple <laughs> game. I'm going to read out a series of statements to you. If you agree with them, you shout out, I'll drink to that, and you down one of these glasses of holy vodka that we've laid out for you. You know, I've not seen an array like this since the socialites played in San Palmarino. <laughs> <laughs> now, for legal reasons, can you confirm that you're doing this of your own free will and that we're not blackmailing you or coercing you in any way? Not coercing, no, more like ambushing. But I've never been one to turn down a challenge, and after all, our good lord even enjoyed a tipple from time to time. The judges and all jumble sales and child abuse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play! <laughs> Cats are better than dogs. That clearly you've not met my poodle Beelzebub. Oh. No? Mm -hmm. All right. Coffee is better than tea. That, that's clearly heresy. <laughs> we will get you. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean Ch You know who that is, do you? I'd be rather fond of country music these days. Uh, gosh, that's broken a few hearts amongst our old fans, I'd imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Bob Jean Short's hit song, Do What I Say or Go Back to the Basement, is better than Graham Bannon's classic hit from the 50s, If You Won't Be My Lady, Lady. Better than Graham Bannon. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Yeah! I can't believe you actually took that. <laughs> End of the game. Wife fronts are better than boxer shorts. I'll drink to that. Fantastic. <laughs> We're learning a lot here. Mm. <laughs> a bacon sandwich is better than fish and chips. Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, sauce on the sandwich. If you like. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Girls are better than boys. Mm. Bloody drink to that. Language, <laughs> Archbishop. <laughs> Charity is better than thrift. Nah, that's a bit theosophic. Theos <laughs> that's, that's a bit deep. <laughs> the, the, the shot goes straight to my head. You know. <laughs> I can see that. He honestly thought that you were going to be sober at this point. Well, you can take the boy out of the socialites, but you can't take the archbishop out of the boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, um... No, wait, that doesn't sound good. God is better than all of us. Of course he is. He's fucking great! Well, I'll <laughs> drink to that! I'll drink to that! Can you have a bucket somewhere? <laughs> You'd think getting smashed on live television would have ruined the archbishop's career. Well, how drunk is he? Well, we drank half a bottle of Erkistani Special Reserve, whatever that is. Oh, that really helps. Please, Eamon, just go with the flow. Ten seconds, everybody. You go with the fucking flow. I'm sticking to the script. And all because of a few shots. Going in five, four, three, two. It was through me and a dodgy offline. Unforgettable stuff. But, Peter, while you took all the credit, arguably, someone else did all the work, didn't they now? Who's this? Didn't they know? <laughs> 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 Peter Clement, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's, and it's gentlemen. someone foreign. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, now we have to finish it. <laughs> Drink in glorious Afghanistan. People fight to death for a single shot of this. Uh, it's very popular television program. Tonight, you speak from bottle. Yep, that's it. I think we can safely say we've got him drunk. Yes, the ratio has just been great. That is 60%. Right, uh, right, what happened here? Yeah, sorry, Eamon. Oh, yeah, he spit on chair uh, like a village prostitute at annual feast of Bukaki. Uh, right, fine, we'll do the interview standing up. Eric, could you? Already on it. Yes, we stand for interview. And then we drink like we march to certain death tomorrow. <laughs> like in war, yes? Try again. Only this time, like you have bowls of bull and not penis of flea. Penis of flea. He's having a drink. Ah, uh, uh, now you fit to execute dissidents? Amen! Ah, uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, drink, Spangly Man. Uh, no, no, you see, I have a very low tolerance for that sort of thing. Either you drink with me, or I send special Erkistani Black Ops unit to your home, and they kill you and all your family. Kill you and all your family. Just the one, then. Just the one, then. Oh. What a glorious Afghanistan! Have we killed him? <laughs> no? Right, well, let's get this sorted out. Eric, is Jim still here? They're all still here waiting for the finale. Get him out then. 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and sorry for the unforeseen circumstances. Stick with us, and we will get this back on track. Uh, it's like man who tried to set fire to a house for insurance and end up burning down whole village. Not helping, mate. Uh, not trying to. What do you need? These are his cue cards. You are host. Right, you are, PC. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> and that's thanks to Dorothy. Oh, that's not right. Thank it's you. thanks to Ivan Bonovich. Come on, Ivan, this way, mate. Yes. This way. Maybe I, I, I lie down. Good idea. You need to be ready for the finale. One problem <laughs> at a time, Eric. Right, you go to the podium. I'll get Ivan off. Come on, mate, this. Go off for the song. Oh, yes, wait. Yes, we sing of the old times in the forest and the future of glorious Erkista. Yes. Land of my fathers, land where man is man. On what to slaughter for glorious Erkistan, where the penis is a large, and we think of the glory as our two mess and tails. Oh, are we sick now? And that brings us to last year when you surprised the whole country by announcing that you're forming a new political party. And as the last bit of your life is always the future... Son, it's time we had a talk. Well, I know that voice. It's your old man myself and I assume your father. Please welcome Martin and Fanny Clements. <laughs> It just really loves Martin's asleep in that holding area. Still, wind's enough to conjure some spunk, as they say, on the wards. Chip Petal, nice to see you. And you too, Mrs Clement. Oh, call me Fanny Love. We're way past formality. After all, as they say in the Navy, no point in brushing your teeth when you've already swallowed me up. <laughs> this way, pet. Yeah, I'll put that in for you. Hello. 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 Oh. Sorry about your car. He's had one too many and I didn't see any point in waking him up. No, right, Mum. I think you were due in a little bit earlier. We have been waiting a while, Pet, yes. Now, love. This isn't easy, now, but there's something I want to talk easy, about. Oh, uh, what's that then? We need to talk about your drinking. Right, now I know what to call this path. Right, Pet. Look at the state of things. Everybody drinks in show business, ma'am. They love it when I'm drunk. I'm not hurting anyone. OK. I didn't want to do this, but as they say in prison, if they won't open their mouths, you'll just have to use the shunt. You there, come here. You there, come here. Could you get everyone out here, Pet? Um, yes, we, we planned that here, uh, for the song after the debate. Well, can you bring them out now instead? Um, uh, yes, OK. And uh, while we wait, perhaps you could tell us a story from Martin, uh, from Peter's childhood. OK. Right. This is a story from a long time ago. Probably even before Petey can remember. You were four, maybe five years old. And you were playing out in the back garden. His dad were on the prowl. You were always on the prowl. Yes, but this isn't about him. This is about you. Anyway, you hadn't been out there long when all of a sudden you came rushing in, all covered in blood, and you were holding something in your hands. It were a bird, a pigeon. You said you'd seen it all roughed up by a neighbour's cat and you were holding it out to me like I was some sort of vet. So we got a shoebox and you made a bed for it out of leaves and grass from garden. Why don't I remember this? And you refused to go to school. You just spent the days tending your bird, feeding it with your fingers, talking to it. You even sang to it once, if I remember rightly. In spite of all you did, on the fourth morning you woke up and bird were dead. You were inconsolable, pet. 
No matter what I did, you would not stop no crying did, for weeks. Crying for weeks. Something about it weren't sitting right. You were feeling guilty, but it weren't your fault. Eventually, you cracked and told me the truth. There weren't no cat. You'd been angry with your dad and you'd kicked your football, meaning to smash a window, and you'd hit the bird. It weren't your fault, but well... Oh, God, I remember. There were feathers everywhere. So, we held a little ceremony and we buried it in the back garden. And you gave a little speech. You said you would never hurt anything ever again. You would always help. You said that were a Peter Clement promise. First time you'd use that phrase. And you meant it, pet, became your life. Never hurt, always help. But I'm looking at these people here, these bits of your life, people you've hurt. There's the ex-girlfriend you cheated on, the colleague you bullied, and your new friend here, the one who says you're only good before eight o'clock. And as for the rest of them, your drinking pals, two of them are passed out backstage and the last one's stormed off to a wine bar. What's your point, Mark? Chelsea Pet. How did you feel when you found our Petey in bed with Victoria? Oh, God, that was years ago. Come on. Tell her the story. Tell her the story. Um... <clears throat> um, <clears throat> well, well, I spent the afternoon with Jan Sandwood, I you know, uh, Victoria's sister, and, and, Victoria's and I bought Petey here a present. And I bought Petey here so I went to look for him in his secret hiding place under the stage. Hiding place under the stage. Only when I got there, like it did, giggling, like and bottles clinking, and bottles clinking. Don't know why I kept on walking. I knew what were going on. I guess I just had to see it for myself, you know, with my own eyes. Pair of you were half naked, wrapped up in your tatty, bloody sleeping bag. God knows how much you'd had. At one point, your head just lolled backwards and it was like you were... Seen beyond me. Seen beyond me. You were that far gone up. It were like I were. It were like I were. Sodding invisible. I didn't mean for it to happen, Chelsea. It was just one of those things. Yeah, like when Jimmy lost part of his foot. Oh, come on, Jim. That was just. Petey, you are a treasure. You are a treasure. When you drink, you hurt people. And, and, and the more they love you, sorry, love, but the more you love, they love you, the deeper you hurt them. You're going to be Prime Minister, pet, but if you don't stop, if you don't change, you'll forget things, you'll miss things. And this lovely lady here, tell us about Huntledon, please. Tell us about Huntledon, please. Well, uh, um, you saw it on the news, I'm sure. Tell us how it was for you. It was, um, well, as you all saw, uh, Peter was slurring slightly and the invective was, shall we say, flowing freely. And Peter called an audience member a... Uh, well, you, you all know what word he used. Ah, we do that. It was couldn't, wouldn't it? Yes, it was. And that's not really what politicians are supposed to do. Didn't hurt us in the polls, though. Didn't no. Hurt us in the polls, though. That's the amazing thing. Nothing Peter does seems to hurt us in the polling. But um, I was watching a young activist in the crowd. I, I like to watch the crowd at these things, get some instant feedback. And, uh, and she was looking up at Peter on the stage when you were talking, well, ranting by this point. And when you said that word... A light, a light went off in her eyes. I saw it happen. And, it happen. and she looked at the floor and then she turned the and, and then pushed her way through the crowds. And, and that young woman will never, vote, woman for us. Will never vote for us. 
And it's not because of what Peter was saying, that the point he was making was really good. It was just the words the drink chose to use. That's what scared me. What are you most afraid of, Pat? What are you most afraid of, Pat? I'm scared of two things. I'm scared that... I'm scared... Sorry, Peter. But I'm scared that you'll drink yourself to death. And I'm scared that, you'll and I'm scared to that it will cost us and the election. That it will cost us and the as a election. result, millions of people result, we could have helped. You only hurt people when you drink, Petey. You but drink after the election, when you run in the country, how many more people will get hurt because you took your eye off the ball and onto a bottle? I don't know. What to say, ma'am? Who here thinks things would be better if our PT gave up the booze? Of course. Sorry, mate, yes. but she's right. Yes. I mean, well, obviously, I think Peter is a suitable Not candidate. Not pet, just answer. Answer. Not Sorry. Pet, just then, um, yes. Then, um, do you understand, PT? Do you understand, PT? This man. This man. Sorry, Charles. Sorry, Charles. Jim. Sorry, Julian. Everyone. Don't be sorry, Petey. Be better. Say you'll change. Look your old man in the eyes and promise me. I want to. I want to. But I don't know how. You can't do it alone. It's impossible. But you're not alone, are you? No, ma. Good. No, ma. Come and give your mother a hug. Come and give your mother a hug. When you're feeling sleepy, you're feeling that, you, sleepy just that you just keep crying out, Ma's got juice the jaws. When it's overwhelming, Nobody about has got just the job. Troubles come like sunsets every single day. Brave men stand and fight with them. Cowards run away. But if you've made things better, when your time has come to stay. Just and we're out. And we're out. Do you ever feel like you're running in circles?